Before we begin, guys, I just want to make you guys aware. I do know that pressing X on Murray makes him do funny things. I just really don't feel like doing it between all the episodes, because I don't know, I'm too lazy. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get kind of those things. You know, I'm going to be one of the points where I say, you know, if you want to see it, just play the damn game yourself, because I really, it's just right, some points. Out a way to get us to Haiti. You know, I kind of want to make it, because when I play these games, I really kind of want to make them popular, even though they're already popular. <laughs> this is already a really popular game. See you next. The third oh, member of the Fiend Dish 5 was the infamous voodoo priestess, Ms. Ruby. Born into a family of mystics, other children found her scary. Teaching herself to summon the undead provided what few friends she had. A career in crime allowed an adult Ms. Ruby to punish the world for fearing her as a child. Chief mystic for the Fiendish Five, her powers allowed them to break both the laws of man and nature at the same time. Yet despite the whirlwind success of her youth, she managed to slip into obscurity. Last known sightings claim she headed out of civilization and deep into the Haitian jungle. Okay. The Dread Swamp Bath. Can I break those? No, I can't. This is a really cool level. Um, it's all like voodoo designed and shit. It's really cool looking. Also, those mosquitoes will be a pain in the ass if you get hit by them. Sorry, Sly, but this is one mission you will have to accomplish without me. You don't believe in ghosts, do you? Sure I do. My scanners have picked up verifiable paranormal activity. But that's not a problem. This swamp is oozing with disgusting mold and bacteria. Suck it up, Bentley. We got work to do. All right, then. Don't forget to use the new move you learned from Mugshot section of the Thievius Raccoonus. You mean the Raccoon Railwalk? The roots and vines around here are perfect for that. All you gotta do is jump and hit the circle button. Especially where you see the bark has been worn away. And where it's super slick from Mickey Slime and Moss. Rail slide like a skater grinding pipe. I'm liking it. And by skater grinding pipe, you just mean it's basically just like the grind boots in Ratchet and Clank. Oh, whatever. The other thing with this game is one thing I'm gonna say is that um most PS2 games were very long. That was the thing you had to do with your PS2 games. You had to make them a long game if you wanted them to sell. This game wasn't very long, but it came with every PS2, I think. I think everyone's played this game. Anyone who has a PS2 has played this game. Not everyone, but. It's one of them games I do suggest everyone play. It's, it's a good game. It's a classic. It's a classic, bro. So this is literally like a classic game. As soon as it's old enough, this will literally be referred to as a classic. Because I will still be playing it. And my children will be playing it. And my children's children will be playing it. And my children's children's children will be playing it. They better damn be playing it. And watching this damn video. I'm just kidding. But, uh... I wonder if YouTube would still be around. Like, I, like I, I know if the internet would still be around. Like, I always imagined, like, many years from now, will YouTube, will YouTube still have all of its videos on it? I mean, it makes a great place to store videos. I mean, I mean, like, until the end of time, will YouTube have everything that we've put so much work into, I guess you could say. Like, these Let's Plays I do, I mean, like, like my future generations. Cause that's another thing, I guess, like, I think it's one of the main reasons Let's Plays are so popular, is because they're kind of like, uh, arc archives <laughs> of games. I don't know, I just, I, I thought of them like, I've always thought of them like that, I, they just feel like it. Like, it's kind of like you never want that game to ever be forgotten amongst history. Yeah. Oh, although honestly, like older NES games have, are not comparable to today's games because of technology. I have a weird feeling like today's games, on the other hand, will be comparable because yeah, they've improved, but only by graphics, not by gameplay. If anything, gameplay has gotten worse over the years, in my opinion. I like older games, I like I like this is like my generation of gaming. I understand that, but. 
it's kind of like older people enjoy side scrollers. Whoa, don't forget that. But uh, this is my generation of gaming right here. This is what I grew up with. This is the shit indeed. Discard, I say. Okay, they're gonna hunt like a pack. It's kind of like that one level in the mug shot, mug shot, but it's not as hard, in my opinion. I like this one easier. This is easier. That's Miss Ruby's lair. To get in, you'll need that key on top of a tiki pedestal in the guard compound. There's a bad mojo force field protecting it, so you'll have to destroy all five of the purple candles surrounding it. No problem. Don't get cocky, or you'll end up with your head shrunk to the size of a pea. You've got to get past those voodoo guards, and I'm warning you, they're made, and they work like a team. So do we, buddy. You know, it you know, sucks. Games like this with really easy controls give you the option of repeating the tutorials and stuff. Games with difficult controls, like, um, I don't know, Luigi's Mansion. No, Luigi's Mansion is super easy tutorials, what am I saying? I don't know, a game with really hard controls doesn't let you complete with repeat the tutorials. Like, I don't know, I don't see the point behind that. Like, Banjo-Kazooie lets you repeat the tutorials, but it's got really easy controls. It's really easy to figure out. Any dumbass who's played a game before doesn't play Banjo-Kazooie. Also, last bottle right here. That's all of them. You don't actually have to kill all the guards, but I enjoy killing them. They're fun to kill. That's a weird thing to say. They're fun to kill. Doesn't matter what you're saying, that's a weird thing to say in general. You've done it! The Mojo Force Field is down, and you can steal the key! I wanna steal whatever's in this vault first. <laughs> Press the circle to enter the scotch here. If I did my math right, and I always do my math right, then the combination has got to be 588. Eight. 588. Eight. Eight. Let's see what they Oh, got a, got a new power. Electrified! Kelly McCooper's notes on how to harness the electromagnetic field created by a rolling raccoon. Now your raccoon roll move will really pack a punch. Plus, it should give you a nice tingling sensation. Okay then. Okay then. Also, I forgot to say this last episode, but am I the only one who noticed like whatever mugshot says is uh, sounds perverted? Like 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 the part when you get to in the battle, the very first lines he says, Sly's first line sound really perverted. <laughs> they just do. Like I can't remember what it was like. He's like that stick. I've seen that stick before. <laughs> it's like that's <laughs> what. Also, the hub level is like really big in this world. Like it's designed large, like really big. My paranormal scanner is maxing out on that structure. A reading like that could only be coming off Ms. Ruby herself. I think you're right, Sly. If you want to crack at Ms. Ruby, you're going to have to find a way inside that skull temple. Oh, uh, why is it that all the characters can't just choose like hidden areas? Like they do in slide two and slide three, the characters are all really well hidden. I don't know. I like her accent. Actually, I don't like her accent. She's like a sassy black lady. She's like a sassy black lady. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just think it's funny. She's got like a. Is it a sassy black lady voice? Or am I just really bad at this? The Leia of the Beast. Oh, I love this level. Let's do this. What's with this industrial strike voodoo gate? Ms. Ruby must really be trying to keep something out. Or maybe 
She's trying to keep something in. I remember uh, this level. This level sticks out. Anyone who watched my old LP, this level might stick out a little bit. You guys remember my old LP where, uh, this goddamn level where I freaking uh, turned off my PS2 or some shit. I, I did something in my file. I got corrupted or something. And this level was where I did it. But I'm good this time. Last time it was because I was too close to my PS2. And I was messing with it. And, like nowadays, um, my PS2 is miles away from me. I got a mile. I ain't gonna get this. Because nowadays I'm actually by a computer doing all this. And I have it all playing through my headphones. And my TV's actually silent. It's amazing. I, w I would really feel bad if someone walked in here to come like watch me LT or something. And they couldn't hear the game. Because they wouldn't. The game, the TV is 100% silent. It's all coming through my headphones. And, um... Also, uh... I also have, uh... I only have video coming out of my TV. Because my computer, like, intends on putting it in a really small, uh... Little, like, preview screen. Just to make sure the graphics look right. This world's dark. Bright computer or not, this world's dark. This is one game, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is that one game where it still feels magical, no matter how many times you've played it. Kinda like, nowadays, I, I mean, games really do, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, games even today, when I'm at this age, they, things they do, the little things they do, feel magical to me. It's just amazing, this, the charms you can put into your games. But they don't stay. Like, Minecraft, for example, like, my first time playing it, when I was building the dirt huts, and the, uh, I didn't have a chance of ever finding iron ore. I felt like that was like my days where the game felt magical. And then like I got good at the game and it just feels like it's like a profession of mine or something now. It's not like a s it didn't feel like I was a like I thought I was amazing because I cut a hole in the mountain and made a house like that with a bunch of rooms. You can't do this. Wait a second. Listen, sir. I I can't, we can't be, we can't, sir, sir, sir. Okay, this time, this time, this time I'm just gonna talk for the dragon, because the dragon doesn't feel like we're flying. Mm -mm. Okay, I know, how this, I know how this works. Excuse me, sir, do you have a minute to talk about Jesus Christ? Okay, I gotta stop making, I gotta stop making Jehovah's Witness jokes. <laughs> Am I LPs? I'm gonna get in trouble one of these days for doing those. Someone's gonna be like, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, and I'm offended by your jokes of Jehovah's Witnesses, or whatever. I don't know what you say. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if you're offended by my Jehovah's Witness jokes, but... I'm sorry. I just, it's, they're, they're annoying. Come on. That bone's like a penis. Uh, we got, oh, I got a, I got a lucky charm. I also fell in the water. Okay, I I'll accept that. <laughs> I think this, mon oh, this monster doesn't return in the... No, it isn't. This is a, it's a different monster that appears in the uh, third game. But there is, like, a giant serpent in the third game, too. I'm not gonna spoil why, or where, or what, but there it is. That's not a spoiler. I had to overcome some personal demons to get the answer to this one. Try four, four, four. Four, four, four. Why not? Why the hell not? That's a hard password to figure out. I guess actually, when a password's too simple like that, it is hard to find. Ah, a more modern entry. Bruce O'Coop's computer hacking technique. Using the data on this page, I should be able to tap the duty roster at each hideout and project guard information into your binocucom. No point behind that, just gonna say it just gives them names and their powers. I wasn't joking. I think every guard has their own name, I'm not sure if it's true. But I think this is the one where every guard even has their own name. 
It could be the second game or third game where it does something like that. Let me try it. Let me find the guard first. What level do I feel like doing? Because I got time to do another level. I'll do this one. This one's cool. There we are. There's a guy. What's it say? Mojo Dupree. Rodentia Voodooium. Enjoy his golf. <laughs> Enjoy his golf. See, it's not useful. This tells you their names. I mean, it's cool. I mean, it really is cool that you have the guards' names and stuff. And it's really good if you like to like write, like if you like to write walkthroughs. Jesus. Sly, the only way to open up that voodoo gate is by lighting all 25 tiki torches with the flamethrower on your swamp skiff. Use the left analog stick to steer and press the X button to fire the flamethrower. Oh, and one more thing. You need fuel from the flamethrower, and the only source of oil are those piranha you see swimming around. Run them down with a boat. One fish fuels one shot. Hurry, you only have two minutes to get all the torches lit. Um, oh, there's no fast pool. Fuel. Come on, guys. It's take forever to get. Fuel should not be hard to get. Two. Be careful doing this. This is a really hard one right here. It's like the hardest level in the game for me. And it still isn't that bad. This isn't a hard game at all. It's honestly, it's hard for a little kid to play. I can see a little kid getting stuck in this game. Come on. Come on, little fishy. There we are. All these lit. Also, I'm shooting fire on a wood platform and it's not lighting on fire. Ugh. Why is it so easy for me all of a sudden? Oh no, it's not easy for me. I'm doing sucky at it. Ugh. Find the one I missed. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, that was easy. Come on, flames. This kind of level. It's fun, but it's not really that good. I mean, it's fun the first time, but this kind of gets old. The swamp stock center. Welcome to the swamp stock center. Welcome to the Swamp Stock Center. I'm Bear Grylls. And today, I'm going to teach you how to eat candles. In the next episode, I will go to some level I haven't been to before. I'll see you then.